I'd sort of like each one of you to talk about, you know, a typical day. Like, really, what's your day like at work from the day you walk in, from the time you walk in to the time you leave? You know, because everyone sort of thinks it's, it's glamorous and it's fun and, and there's a lot more to it. So, you want to start, Andre? Sure. Okay. Um, I'm a music supervisor. I own my own company, and pretty much from the second I wake up, I have my computer on my lap, and I'm checking email and responding to emails because I deal with people um, pretty much all over the world when I'm clearing music and when I'm looking for music. So France, London, New York. I'm based in LA, so I'm behind everybody, so I have to play catch up a lot. Um, so I'm going to be on email, and I'll be looking for new bands all the time throughout the day. So I troll MySpace, you know, Facebook, whatever it is. I check out blogs from different countries. I look for music pretty much everywhere I can. I often rely on a lot of friends' recommendations as well for music, um, if I haven't heard of them. Um, usually I have, not to sound like a snob, but um, <laughs> it just, you know, <laughs> it's my day. Um, and then I do a lot of, uh, I do my own licensing, which some supervisors don't. Um, so I do have to send out requests, do the music research to find out on ASCAP or BM, uh, BMI's website who writes it, who publishes it, have to send the request to the publisher, to the master owner, um, so there's two sides you always have to clear of every song. And then um, usually per project I have anywhere between two songs to 50. <laughs> so um, throughout the day I'll do a lot of paperwork, which is always fun. And then uh, a lot of follow-up because people at licensing companies, <laughs> um, <laughs> they have to deal with so many requests from so many different places, you know, from people like me or from other companies that they're overwhelmed as well. So there's a lot of, hey, remember? <laughs> um, and so uh, you have to do a lot of follow-up and um, just a lot of research in general. But I pretty much also go to sleep with my laptop on me. So um, <laughs> I'm always on my phone or my computer. Um, we were just kidding around upstairs that you know, most of my day I always say is, is probably arguing about money. <laughs> but uh, it, it always, the title is, is sounds very sexy in some ways, but a lot of what we're doing is is we have over a, a million recordings, and a lot of us, a lot of it's a lot of nitty gritty researching rights and making sure we have rights to certain things, and being able to react and get back to the Andreas and, and the different clients we have. Um, the fun part of what I do is searching our catalog or finding the right artist or right track to fit for a visual component. Whether um, in my case, I represent. Uh, uh, we are part of a bigger department that does film and TV um, advertising and video games, and my team focuses solely on advertising. So I'm dealing with ad agencies all day, uh, finding what, first of all, what they need, but also dealing with the licensing. We pitch and try to get into campaigns as early as possible in order to get our artists in there, but we also are dealing with negotiating the rights, uh, which can be tedious, as, as Andre even said. So. Um, it's really fun to be able to, to play on the Mac all day, but that's not really the most of our, of our day. Um, I think what's really good from a label side as opposed to maybe on the publishing side is that we have priorities for the various labels. Like we, we represent everything on the Sony and BMG side. So we have all the Sony labels, we have all the BMG labels, so we have tons of stuff. So we get to kind of cherry pick from all the labels, and not necessarily all the labels, we, we go to our affiliates that maybe don't even have records out here to find the right track because really our agenda is to find the right track not necessarily what's the priority to the label if the priority to the label happens to meet then that's perfect but uh, you know creatively it's it's a fun uh, job but also there's a lot of politics involved and there's a lot of, uh, of behind the scenes dirty issues that we have to deal with with rights and, and artist issues and so forth but uh, I think for the for the most of it, it's it's a lot of detailed paperwork, um, and the fun part is actually when you can able when you can actually look at a picture or, or a link to a scene to a TV show or a scene to a commercial and try to find that right track. And a lot of the catalog stuff that comes in, the no brainers, whether it's a Dylan song or something like that, you know, a lot of those stuff our clients know what they want. But I think the key that really is satisfy, satisfying to me and my team is is when we pair a new artist that no one knows in a campaign and, and, and allow them to be exposed to an audience they never have. Or maybe holding an artist who never licensed a song to a campaign and walking them through that process of licensing a song for the first time. So that's really where our enjoyment comes from. But. 
Um, wow, OK. My basic day <laughs> is I go through cycles. Um, basically, I go through composing cycles where I try to write as much as I can in either specific styles or depending on leads that I have or just what I like. Um, I can go through weeks or a month of that. And uh, I get up early, and I finish late. And I love that. That's why I got into music. And it turns out I actually love the business end, too, though I never thought I would. Um, so I go through cycles with the business. Um, once you get done composing, say, 20 new songs, um, depends what kind of licensing you're doing. But I, write, I try to write a lot to get it out there. If I write 20 new songs, I have to get it to all the contacts I already have and then try to make new contacts because you need to get it out to everyone. People leave companies, people stop actually, music supervisors actually go into licensing and stop being music supervisors sometimes and um, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, in my business end, I wake up early, I have my laptop on me, just like Andrea said, and I try to get in touch with people like Andrea. Um, so you can find emails and phone numbers in a lot of different directories. Uh, though, you have to just really work at it. There's no quick fix. Everyone wants that one directory that has every name, and it just doesn't exist. <laughs> and what happens is a lot of the times you get these numbers, and it goes to the agent, and that sucks. <laughs> Um, you're not going to get anywhere with that. And um, most of, honestly, a lot of the um, really good contacts I've had are through referrals. Mm -hmm. That's the best way. Um, unfortunately, starting out, you're not going to have many. Um, so you have to scour. Um, you can scour Craigslist. You, one, one in uh, about 150 times, you might find something, but you have to keep trying. And um, you have to keep trying no matter what. You have to have super thick skin. You're going to get rejected way more um, than you know getting accepted, and it's not necessarily personal. I mean, the amount of feedback that you don't get back, you know. I mean, people. Are, it tells you just people how busy people are. Um, sometimes people find a song before you send it out. You know, they don't expire the ad, but they might have found a, the Apple net, like you know iPod song the fir in the first 24 hours. Yet the ad goes for a week, so it's not a rejection. You have to continue to try. So I search down emails, contacts. I email people I know already, see, you know, get them new music. Then um, I get agreements. You should have your own fax machine. You have to keep it professional. Um, you don't want to annoy anyone. You know, you have to get things out quickly when it happens. And um, that's what I do. You know, um, and you learn to love that too because you know you get your the, the final result is you get something placed and. You know, if, if you want to get something placed, like I do, on TV, and there, there's your music, you know, and either that can break you or you can make some money, whatever your goal is. Uh, a lot of, there's a lot of different ways to do it. I'm probably saying too much. That's okay. Yeah. That's part of what I'm going to ask you later, but that's good. Yeah, though. no, that's what I'm saying. I'll get into it later. That's great. Thank you. Well, every day is a long day. <laughs> <laughs> and, and one thing I've learned. Uh, being in this business as long as I have is that <clears throat> you can't get everything done in one day. So I try to get as much done as I can during the course of any particular day and night and just keep going to the next day because <laughs> it, it's just too much to, to, to consume and comprehend. Um, I wear a lot of different hats so my day is always very interesting, always very, very busy. Uh, some days very productive, some days it's a little slow, it, it really depends. Um, with what I do with Carl in America, I'm overseeing a catalog of a quarter of a million copyrights. Um, we, we're the second largest independent publisher in the world, so we, we publish ACDC, their whole catalog, all of Jim Steinman and Meatloaf, The Love and Spoonful, The Turtles, Billie Holiday, Bobby Darin, early James Brown, uh, Candor and Ebb, their whole output, some Stephen Sondheim. Um, it, it's an incredible catalog and, and many, many other songs that are you know, very well known. So my day with that is, is really trying to 
find the right opportunities, be proactive with the film and TV and advertising communities in placing those songs in various television shows, films, and commercials. Uh, a lot of times we get requests that come in through the fax machine, always a money maker. Um, it's amazing how much money that machine makes. Because uh, when you have a catalog that's well known, people know the songs and, and they think about it and they just come and, and want to request them. What I've tried to do with the company is really be very proactive in, in, in finding new opportunities for our songs, mining the catalog to find newer songs that are not as well known, trying to get those songs exposed and placed and licensed. If it's a lifestyle kind of artist, that's, that's one area of what, of what people would look for from a record company standpoint. From licensing, it can be anything. It's about what song fits the scene, fits the mood, and it could be something that's a big hit. It could be something that's completely unknown. It's what's going to work that's going to really make, make it right. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a big hit song or a big hit, big hit act. So there's very, very different approaches that happen within all those things.